Welcome to another photo review video. Today I'm taking 20 images that you guys sent to the email that's here in the video description and I'm gonna give you a little bit of a photo critique. Hopefully I can help you a little bit more with photography in general, but also stock photography so that you can generate a few more sales. So. All right, so the first photo of the day is this beautiful waterfall. The whole, the scene looks incredible. What a beautiful place. The lighting is beautiful. Awesome place. Focus looks good. Shutter speed looks pretty good. You can show motion just slightly blurred, which I like. You can get the texture of the water. It looks awesome. Great place. The only thing I don't like here is this log that's sticking up blocking the view. You can see that that rock at the bottom has incredible texture with the green and the light and the, the spray. It looks really pretty and that log is just in the way block, blocking it. Uh, shooting through things is a good idea, but you need to get closer, maybe lower so you can shoot through the plants that are in the bottom and looking at the, the waterfall, the whole scene. I mean, it, overall, I'd say uh, four out of five because the only thing here is uh, the composition. Camera settings are great, great image, great travel photo, really good, three out of five, uh, four out of five. Let's go to the next photo. All right, now we have a whole bunch of people walking. It looks, wow, that place looks awesome. <laughs> Well, on a walk bridge, the people walking on, on this bridge here looking at a beautiful scene. The only thing, I mean the colors, it looks like the shadows were brightened up a lot so it, it looks kind of muted, there's no contra contrast. The highlights are fine, you don't want to burn those out but everything else just looks kind of flat. Add a little bit of contrast, it's fine if it looks a little darker, I mean every, everyone's in the shade. Just play around with the contrast a little bit so that you can make the image pop a little bit more, increase the saturation, just make it look a little bit more wow in your face. Uh, the other thing here is the, the composition. If you move the camera down a little bit, you would show more of the trail. That's kind of on the corner of the photo, so it doesn't look as pleasing. If it was just a little bit more in the third, showing a little bit more of the people walking, I think it would be a, a much better composition. But as it is, it's fine. I would say four out of five. Just pay attention to the editing uh, so that you can get, make it pop a little bit more. A little bit more detail, a little contrast, the color and brightness I think would help this image a lot. Great camera settings, everything looks good. Three out of five because there's two things I noticed. Uh, next. All right, this pen like this, this is beautiful. Uh, the book open, just a few words, that, that looks really cool. I don't know that this is an issue or not, but I've had images rejected because I show too much text. Uh, so it's identifiable, they know who wrote the book, and then that could lead to problems. So this image like this is beautiful. I like the focus, everything is dead on. You can do something similar with concepts. Add a concept by writing out your own words, printing them at home, and just putting the pages like that to focus the attention on those words. I think it would elevate the commercial value of the photo by a lot. Camera settings, uh, I don't have them, to 250th of a second, I don't have an aperture, uh, but it looks great, great detail, great focus, there's no distortion. Good job, five out of five on this one, it looks beautiful. Let's try the next one. All right, here's a cake, beautiful cake. Uh, it looks good, but the right hand side of the cake, where I'm looking at it, has way too much shadow. Adding a reflector, a white card, a white piece of paper will reflect the light coming from the other side and brighten up that side. Remember, when you're doing photos of food for a stock, you want them to pop, you want them to be evenly illuminated, you want them to look the best it can be. And in this case, I think that shadow distracts a little bit too much. The background also has quite a bit of noise, uh, now that I'm looking at it. That might be the ISO. Usually you'll see noise in the dark areas. ISO is 100, F2.8. It might have been recovered in post. Remember, every time you add light in post, it's very similar to pumping up the ISO before you take the photo. Because just like ISO, lifting shadows and lifting the exposure, you're adding light that wasn't there. But as it is, I'm gonna say three out of five, just a little bit more light on one side would have made this image uh, a perfect image. I like the background, I like everything. Just keep the lighting uh, even. 
Next. All right, here's another cake. Come on. Here's another cake. See, the lighting here is a little bit better, but now the shadow is on the left. It still goes okay. Uh, I don't understand why there's a little bit of darkness here. It looks like you brighten it up some. Uh, happy birthday, Anita. That's very specific to a name. If you do a cake like this, just do happy birthday if you can. This was probably somebody's birthday, of course. Anita's birthday, happy birthday. Uh, just add a little bit more light on the side so that you can have everything bright. Like you can see the flowers. And if it was the same brightness on the other side, I think it would be much more commercial. But great job. This one I'm gonna say four out of five. Uh, let's go on to the next image. All right, this one is a little way too dark. I see the pastry, lights on the pastry, you got the coffee cup, but you can't tell what's behind it, what, there's something distracting in the background. The wood, the background is beautiful, it's got good texture, but you can't see it. Food scenes need to be bright. You want food to look appetizing, you want it to look the best it can be, and this one to me is a little dark. I don't think it's gonna get accepted because of the, the brightness. Uh, camera settings, everything looks good. You just have to add a little bit more light, maybe. I don't know if, it, if this is window light, adding a reflector, a diffuser, a piece of paper, a white sheet, something to reflect that light back onto the scene, I think would improve this image uh, dramatically. But in this case, I'm gonna say three out of five. Two out of five, it is way too dark and I don't see this uh, doing much for stock. I could be wrong, I've been wrong in the past, but I, it just, it needs to pop a little bit more. Uh, next, all right, here's an editorial, people doing people things, playing with the children, the, the uh, soap bubble thingies. Great snapshot, I hate to say this, but it doesn't look like it was planned. Uh, the kids are in focus, no, the building is in focus. Uh, the kids are, you barely see their heads with the balloon, and there's too much sky and not what's important, which is the children. Uh, they're the ones that are more in the frame. They're the ones that are interacting with the balloon. They're the ones looking towards the camera. And there's people here in the background. I mean, that's, it's a snapshot. I'm gonna say two out of five. If you lower the camera, it would have improved the image a lot more. And if you focused on the children, it would have been a way better photo. So two out of five in this one. Uh, so let's move on to the next one. All right, so this looks like a chili on a piece of paper. But look how much white is all around the pepper. That's way too much white. You can crop that in and just make it more about the, the pepper itself. In this case, I'm gonna say uh, three out of five. Well illuminated, it looks pretty good. It just has to be cropped in because that's way too much white on the scene. You're not gonna see it in a grid. If you're buying and you're looking at 100 images of peppers, this one's just gonna be all white, especially when it's a thumbnail that big. You wanna be able to find it on when you're looking at a hundred or a thousand images of a pepper. Next is another beautiful waterfall. You got people taking a photo from the other side of the waterfall. The problem is that it's blurry. There's no texture in the image, so that's not gonna get accepted. Great composition, great camera settings. A tripod would have helped a lot, but as it is, it's not gonna get accepted. So two out of five, everything else was good. Motion blur ruined the photo. Uh, one over 15th of a second, if you're hand holding, just a little bit of motion would do this. Uh, as a trick, set it on continuous shooting, hold your breath and press the shutter. Take five images and hopefully one of those will be sharp. <laughs> uh, avoid that movement. Usually when you click, you push the camera. If you hold, push and hold and you take five photos, one of those in the middle should be more stable than the other ones. Next one, we have a few uh, houses here, buildings, beautiful photo. It looks like it was cropped as a panel. Uh, it looks really cool. Oh, I can even see it through the window. Lots of detail, I love the image. The tree in the corner is a little distracting. If you crop that out, uh, I think that's a, just a little bit more pleasing. Maybe even the car out, something like that. Uh, maybe a little bit more of the roofs. It's hard without being in the scene to see what was there, but you're cutting out the colors and the roofs in the background. Uh, and everything else looks really good. Beautiful image, uh, I'm jealous, that's a beautiful spot to take a photo. Camera settings are perfect, F13 should give you good depth. Uh, I don't see any distortions or, any, no, it looks, it looks great. 
<laughs> uh, this would have to be an editorial at somebody else's home, so you can't sell them commercially, but it, it looks like a really cool photo. If anything, just the composition. I wanna see more of what's happening. And this tree and the car over here, a little bit distracting, a little closer maybe like that, fill the frame with the houses. Those three with the green, that looks really good. I'm gonna say three out of five, and let's go on to the next one. All right, now we got a duck, a mallard duck. Uh, one 1,000 FA at 1,000 ISO. The reason I'm looking at the settings is because the background doesn't look that soft, and that's because it's F8. What lens did you have? The lens goes all the way down to 5.6 when it's zoomed out. So if you would have shot that at 5.6, it gives you more light. You don't need to have your ISO as high, which uh, you can see a little bit of noise here because of the ISO 1000 and that gives you more blur in the background. You do want your subject to be in focus, but at f5.6, zoomed out, that should be, uh, it should give you enough depth and enough focus, and you'll be able to lower the ISO. So camera settings are a little iffy. It still looks great. I would submit that definitely. A little bit of, uh, bring up the shadows so you can see more of the face and the eye of the duck. I've sold images like this before. They're common, so they don't sell a ton, but they are sellable images. Uh, so in total, I'm gonna say three out of five on this photo. Good job, good composition. Camera settings need a little bit of help and also a little bit in, in the editing. Uh, next. All right, so now here we have a, looks like a farmer's market, something that looks good, good photo. What are these? That's vegetables and eggplants and all kinds of stuff. But I don't see, nothing is in focus, nothing is really sharp. These things here on the right hand side are a bit distracting. The composition, if you focus from that pole onto the market, the guy here is in the corner of the image so he's a little bit soft and distorted because of that angle. If you would have moved the camera to center him, I think that would have been better. Definitely an editorial image. These are good sellers, farmer's market people doing people things, people shopping, looking at prices, looking at everything that's happening. Uh, good local food, these, these are good sellers, especially in a, a, a travel area, tourist area, where a farmer's market is a big draw. Uh, I think this would do great. Sadly, there's not much in focus. I can't tell from the, from the image. It has potential. Uh, next time, change the focus. Focus on him. The person is always gonna be where your eye goes to to see what they're doing. And in this case, uh, three out of five. Nice job, just, oh, this guy getting a tattoo in his head? That's gonna hurt. All right, good detail. It looks, uh, focus is on. It's kinda hard to see what's happening with the gloves, uh, but it looks pretty good. I would give this one four out of five. It's got enough detail, the composition. There's distracting elements in the background. If you wait a minute or ask people to move to the side, they obviously know you're taking a photo. Uh, it looks good. I'll try to upload it anyway. Maybe change your angle so you see more of what's happening in the guy's head. It's good that you don't show the tattoo because then that's commercial property that belongs to, that's a property that belongs to somebody else. But that's a good image showing what's happening. I just wish his hand wasn't blocking where the needle is. But good job, I'm gonna say four out of five. Just pay attention to the people in the background and you can ask people to move. Nine out of 10 times they will. All right, now we have a mechanic hand. I don't know what this device is, pressure for something, great shot, something's dead, it's got no pressure, but everything else looks pretty good. I like the dirty hands, that's original, you know what he's doing, you know that he's working with his hands. Uh, it looks over sharpened, and I don't understand what that is. Let me look at the camera settings. Oh, that's, it's an iPhone photo. <laughs> that's why it looks sharpened. Most phones over sharpen images. If you could shoot raw and process them later, do that. Uh, it's a good image, focus is here, but you can see that it's a little over sharpened and that's just what phones do, but great concept. Bring your camera to work day. These photos usually do great. Just worry about the, the detail in the image. You want that as best as possible. Uh, four out of five, uh, let's go on to the next one. And it is a rose, good detail. Focus is too much to the front. Try to focus in the bud in the middle. Uh, and you can see here that the front isn't focused and then it starts to fade away when you go to the, to the, to the 
backside of the, the rose. Uh, the color balance doesn't look that natural. It's a, I know it's in the shade. And then that bright area distracts. Your eyes are always gonna go to the, brighter, the brightest part of the image. And in this case, the brightest part of the image is in the upper corner. So your eyes go away. Your vision goes away. If you zoom in, and put the rose in the upper third. Now you have a leading line. You have uh, you have a lot of ways to do this, but it just it needs a little more contrast. It needs a little more punch, a little more light on the rose. There is sunlight, a reflector, something to bring more light would be very helpful. Uh, as it is, I'm gonna say three out of five. As far as the stock photo, eh, it's a rose. There's millions of roses out there. It's gonna be tough selling it. Um, three out of two out of five for a stock uh, camera settings. That's also, it looks like a phone, 1.7 ISO. It's good, it's got good detail. It doesn't look over sharpened. There is some noise and distortion here in the out of focus area, but it could improve by adding light. Uh, next, come on. All right, another garden image, uh, probably the same phone. It, that phone does pretty well. I don't see a lot of distortion. The, the out of focus areas, you can see that noise, you can see that, that squiggly thing. Phones do computational photography. They don't have the optics that a real camera has, that a real lens has. So when you try to get things out of focus, it's all done digitally. And they're doing better and better, but they just can't compare. This one looks pretty good. Um, three out of five. It needs more contrast, it needs more light. You can see the light here in the upper corner. Your eye always goes there, a little bit more zoomed in or aiming down. And there's no specific subject. I don't know what this is, a, what the photo is about. There's greenery. If you focus on one flower and one texture, that will be better. Uh, as it is, I'm gonna say two out of five. Good job, but to sell photos, you need to find a commercial value. You need to have a specific subject and sh make sure that subject is the point of attention or, the, or that concept is where your eye and your, your image goes. Uh, next. All right, next we got a photo of a butterfly on the thistles. This looks great. Uh, let me focus this spot on. It does look like texture was added to it because it, it just looks way too crisp. <laughs> uh, it almost looks like a phone photo. I don't think it is because it's got a lot of detail uh, and the out of focus looks natural. So it might be, let me look at what camera it was. All right, this is a Can Canon R5 with the 100 millimeter macro. Good camera settings, uh, great focus. That ant in the back here, it might be a little distracting just because it's a dark spot in the middle of the photo. It's hard, you could probably Photoshop it out. Uh, otherwise, it's fine. The only thing I'm gonna say about this one is the over sharpening. It's a little distracting. It looks great, but it just has to, overdone. Be very careful not to overcook your images. Uh, and this one I'm gonna say four out of five. Commercial aspect might be a little bit low. Remember to tag everything you can about the butterfly, the name, the scientific name, where it's at, if it's endangered. All these things will help you sell the image if you have all that information with the photo. So four out of five, great job. Let's go on to the next one. This looks like fun. Somebody was playing with lights, textures, that looks cool, movement. I mean, the ISO is a little high, if I remember right. Let me look at this one. Uh, Nikon D800, 6400 ISO, six seconds. So the ISO is a little high, which is why there's noise here in the, in the brights and shadows where, where there's no light. You can see a lot of noise. It's fun. The, doing this stuff like this is a lot of fun. Playing with lights, playing with, you know, whether it's, it's vehicles driving through or things like this, it makes for good backgrounds. As far as stock, I don't think it's gonna get accepted because of the noise. Um, but you're doing great. Keep playing around with this. I love playing around with lights and painting at night. It's fun. You can learn a lot about time, timing, uh, and camera settings and everything else. Light painting has always been one of my favorite things to do. <laughs> uh, as it is, great image. For stock, unfortunately, I don't think it's gonna get accepted because of that noise. Uh, four out of five as, uh, overall, and let's move on to the next one, which is the beautiful sunset. Nice boat, wow, that's beautiful. <laughs> I want one of those, that looks beautiful, that's awesome. Uh, sunset, you can see that there's a glow that was burnt out. There's a, a bit of a green tint. White balance is off just a little bit. 
kind of purple green. If you made it a little bit warmer, I think it would uh, attract more light. This sun is overexposed and burnt. It's very hard, especially at this. This has a phone look to it. Nope, Panasonic DCS5, Lumix 20 to 60. Hmm. I think it's just because of the white balance and the texture here uh, that it looks like a phone. See, when you zoom in, you can see all the buildings, they, they just lose that sharpness. Uh, the edit needs a little bit of help. If you burn something out, add a little bit of color, add a soft filter, you can recover a lot of that. Make the image a little bit warmer. It's a beautiful image, leading lines, you got the great composition here. It's just that the colors and the overall exposure seems a little bit off. Uh, do I have a, yes, I have an editor here. Let's go to the color. See, if I just warm it up a little bit, it starts to change. It looks a little bit more yellow, less green. The sun, I can recover it like that just a little bit more. So just by warming it up a little bit, you can see what a difference it made in the photo. And I think that would be a more sellable image, especially because now you don't see the sun. You don't see those that, that blown out areas in the sun as much. Uh, but great job, I'm gonna say four out of five. I like your composition, I love this spot. It looks beautiful for photos. Uh, just keep trying and pay close attention to how you're editing your images. Uh, next. All right, here's next and last photo of the day, which are, what are these? I'm not sure what these are, but they look pretty good. <laughs> so good settings, F13 with the Sony 400 ISO, one over 60. F13, that's why the background is kind of sharp and a little bit much. If you would have done like F8, F5, 6, you would still keep sharpness on your one object in focus. And then the background would be a little bit more blur, which will make your eyes stay on your subject. Uh, the shadows are a little distracting, a diffuser, a white sheet, something to block the sunlight so it's not direct will give you much better results. I've done this a lot, a cheap diffuser, you can buy one for like 20 bucks, 30 bucks, that would improve your photography a lot. Um, especially in harsh sunshine, you still get the shadow, you still get the highlights, but the diffused light, it's, it's optimal for situations like this, for products like this. I don't know what these are, it's not here in the metadata, so I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> but it's a good, good image, I'm gonna say four out of five, the only thing here will be the light. And if you used a wider aperture, like even f8, uh, distance, yeah, you can go down to four or five, that would have been a much better blurred background, keeping your attention on your main subject. But good job, uh, four out of five. And I believe that was all for today. I hope this video was helpful. These were 20 images. I've tried to give you a little bit of everything so that you can understand a little bit more about how stock photography works and also how to improve your photography. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.